Hello, everyone. I'm Jean-Claude Abion Mystic, and welcome to tonight's edition of the Divine Feminine Oracles Show. Tonight's special focus is on the fall equinox. With me, of course, is the amazing Julie. You can find her at Maison de Jupiter here on YouTube as well as on the web. And also her lovely, talented sister, Sophie, also at MaisonJupiter.com. Sophie, Julie, welcome back to the show. How are you guys? Hi, how are you guys? Hey, I'm good. Hi to the both of you. I'm excited to have you guys on and I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone watching us live here tonight on September 13th and I also wanted to do a quick update to the audience members. I read a couple of comments the other day in the email and people were uh, commenting that I often laugh as we start the introduction to the show and I wanted to let you know why that is. <laughs> And this is because these people here, my guests, uh, they know that I'm always li uh, nervous before I go live. And once I press that button to say we're going to go live, there's a countdown and I can't stop it, right? So this is the opportune moment where they say something to make me laugh just to get me off cue <laughs> for when I go live. So that explains it, folks. Uh, we're just having a lot of fun sometimes in the uh, pre-show and also in the after show. And you guys catch glimpses of this as we go live with the live button. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us uh, tonight. Um, why don't we start with this? Uh, Sophie, of course, in the last show last week, let me bring you up on the screen here. We talked about um, the full moon, the fact that we're in this retrograde, a lot of heavy, intense energies for a lot of people here. Why don't we start by doing a general reading right now to see what we're dealing with in the aftermath of the full moon and also still here in these retrograde energies? What type of energies are the audience members uh, watching the show here tonight uh, are being involved with? Okay, sure. So I will do a reading, but also just in consultation this week and the past week, um, I have to tell you that the theme that reoccur every time, every day for almost everyone, it's anxiety a lot. And with everything going on in the world, with the, the energies right now, you're not alone, guys. Everyone is feeling it. We are feeling it too. And I really feel that right now it's really intense. So Particularly with Virgo, we're looking at coping mechanisms, helping we change our routine to adjust to those, those tension, to those uh, anxiety uh, feeling in our life. So we are looking at solution. I think it's really great that we are doing that. But to get there, we needed a lot of pressure. And that's what we are in right now. So that pressure is really there to make you move, to make change in your life, that in your routine, in your day-to-day -day life, you are adjusting, that you're not taking too much stress, that you also don't react in a way that you arm yourself with that. So not too much sugar, not too much drinking, not too much spending. For many, it's, you know, it's, different coping mechanisms, but there is good one and there's not so good one. So mm -hmm. this is the energy right now with the consultation. I will read and the card. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, before you pull cards, uh, Sophie, uh, Julie, that makes a lot of sense too, because in our last uh, Astro Woo, I believe, you had talked about some of these tendencies uh, to try to avoid some of these energies. So you talked about like uh, people who have addictions might be falling deeper into addictions. Do you want to just share that quickly here with the audience members, what was in this episode? And then we'll yeah, go sure. back to Sophie and Oscar for the cards here. Sure. So Neptune is very much activated right now. So the planet Neptune is all about, uh, as Sophie was saying, our coping mechanisms, our addictions, are the ways, the subtle ways sometimes that we use to escape reality because it's easier. It could be just sleeping. Yeah. It could be as uh, as uh, simple as sleeping. It could be shopping. It could be drinking for some people. It could be also there's, like Sophie said, good ways of escaping realities. Well, let's say better ways. Uh, this includes uh, meditating, uh, doing, uh, going outside. But as, of, as with everything, if you do it, too much it can be uh it can be like putting a plaster over uh, over something instead of like really working on the source of your issue so if you're not people call spiritual bypassing exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly so I think we're all guilty of that sometimes yeah for sure yeah. we all have our ways i do it i yeah. I, use, I i love online shopping so whenever i feel down i feel like buying a lot of stuff and i have my venus and libra so I love beautiful stuff. So this is mine, but everybody got theirs. So Neptune is very much activated right now. So I think we all have to, uh, let's say, 
uh, be real with ourselves. What is our coping mechanism and how can we, let's say, channel this energy in a better way? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right. So um, yeah, well, thank you for that, Sophie. It's, it's really interesting that you give us these kind of like hints of what everybody's talking about. We have themes every week. So it's like a live test bed of audience members. <laughs> and it helps us, I guess, better serve the clientele here and, and kind of tailor the content for them here on the live show. So a big thank you for, uh, for that, uh, Sophie. So Sophie, yeah, let's pull some cards now and see what types of energies uh, we're dealing here uh, this week after the aftermath of the uh, full moon and also the beginning here of this retrograde energy. Well, we're just, we just said it, but um, we do have here coping mechanisms in the cards. And we do have here, how can we integrate a better way of doing that? We have It's a Wonderful Life and we have the Empress. So this is your intuition, your divine feminine, both for male and for female, because we do have the boat inside of us. And this is also creativity. So this is a beautiful way also, if you want to change your coping mechanisms, maybe to go into creating some on your project or painting or if you're not good with that maybe sing even if it's really badly just sing have fun with that or even better just dance alone in your house this is activating the root chakra even if you're not good at it it's always fun and it's always really helping to ground you so this is going to release stress grounding you and also expressing a beautiful side of neptune so mm. this will be the uh, the intention right now yeah. And let me ask you also uh, before. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, there's a little um, bit of a delay. Go ahead, Julia. I didn't want to interrupt. I'm you. sorry. I didn't want to cut you. I just, I just forgot about Neptune, which is also music. So, uh, and arts. So it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Makes sense. Um, the Queen's departure. Now we did a special decode show on that on our pay-per-view. You guys can go check it out. Uh, but I wanted to ask Sophie how, those energies are also perhaps affecting the collective. There was a survey done uh, here in Canada today. I'll see if I can bring it up here, where it says that basically Canadians don't really care. They're not registering uh, this event, nowhere close at least to the way they did for uh, Princess Diana. But I'm wondering to what extent the energy and maybe the change of regime that follows um, might be affecting uh, the rest of the population here. Can you pull some cards on that and see how, if anything, there's an effect from the departure of this particular entity? For Canadians or for everyone, you said? For everyone. I just, I'm looking for the Canadian survey that was put out today there, but okay. uh, yeah, for everyone. Mm -hmm. I love it. There's a desire to let go. So we have desire. This is, we need more than words. We need action. We need change. And this is letting go and just trusting the divine. So I think it's just um, release and then a, and a feeling of, well, it was about time that there's something that release and we see change in action. Now we want to have more change coming in. So that's just, I think it's just an appetite. I don't know that word in English. Uh, entree? Appetizers? Yeah. Appetizer, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> good, good. I think it's just a, let's say it's just a taste of what is to come. Let's say this way. <laughs> okay, really good. And yes, I think I just found it. I had posted it earlier, I believe, in my Telegram. Let me see if I can share this with you guys. Most Canadians are indifferent to British monarchy, untouched by the Queen's death. Well, that's surprising to me. And uh, guys, if you go check out that uh, uh, interview we did with our friend there <laughs> on the pay-per-view, uh, you, you'll see there's a lot of weird things happening on the on that particular day. Um, okay, <laughs> there's a lot of astrology here. Of course, we're moving into the equinox. Uh, how do you want to start with this? You want to start with May Bon? Explain to your people yeah. where that uh, pagan um, uh, nomenclature comes from, and then we'll get into the astrology itself of the equinox. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes total sense. Okay. So um, I know we're kind of in some more uh, dense energies right now, but I wanted to touch base on what's coming what new energies are coming in our field. So this is on September 22nd. It's going to be the change of season. So uh, in the pagan rituals, they used to call it Mabon, Mabon. Uh, 
so this is the celebration for the northern hemisphere, the, the fall equinox. In the, the southern hemisphere, you're going to have the Astara, which is the spring equinox. So equinox is when the day and the night are equal. So it's a point, a very important point of the Earth's rotation around the sun. And uh, as of this day, so September 22nd, we're entering into the fall. So this is very important. And uh, I'm going to talk about Maybon and the old, let's say, pagan ritual, but also how we can uh, use it and make it a modern type of ritual, because I feel like this is a very important part of our ascension, spiritually speaking, because we have to relearn how to uh, work with the seasons. We have to relearn how to work with cycles of the earth because uh, I feel like it's a big important part of what's been taken away from the humans in order to uh, make us part of the matrix, make us comply to the big cities, uh, the, let's say, AI, the inorganic energies. But So disconnecting from that matrix energy of um, extraction of energy and connecting more to Gaia as we once were. Exactly. Right. Well said. Okay. So I feel like this is very important that we relearn to how to live with the seasons and the cycles. So astrology is very important, but also the old pagan rituals. So Maybon is the fall equinox. So same thing. Uh, and uh, during Maybon, they used to celebrate the harvest. So it's harvest season. We just had the last full moon that we had on September 10th was the harvest moon. So the, the full moon of September. And I, it's a celebration usually uh, used for uh, to express gratefulness around all forms of abundance in our lives. So food, uh, harvest, but also money, love, happiness, uh, all sorts of abundance. So it's very important because I feel like the pagan ritual and also astrology are very um, aligned together. Because Maybon is all about restoring balance and harmony into our lives. So this is the main theme of the fall equinox. Because we're entering into Libra season, which is the balance. So we're all being asked to uh, yeah, restore some balance in our personal lives, but also in the, our collective lives. So, uh, and because as we're entering into Libra season, fall equinox, same thing, uh mercury is retrograde uh in the sign of virgo well it's going to retrograde the next day in the sign of virgo so it's all about modifying our routines our day-to-day -day lives into getting more of that balance so sophie was talking about our uh healthy habits but also everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis to regain this sense of balance because we're entering very soon into eclipse season, as you uh, all know. Mm -hmm. So eclipse season has to do with lots of changes, rapid changes, uh, personal and also collective. So I feel like this uh, per uh, particular fall equinox is going to be very important for us this next month we're going into because we're having to rebalance with the new energies of earth and also prepare ourselves for the big transformation which is uh eclipse season but also winter so we are recalibrating in preparation to transform transformation is the the the, the fall season and also we're preparing to go inwards because it's winter. Winter is the season, it's like the death season and we're going inwards during winter. So before that, we're preparing, we're into this big transformation, which is fall. So uh, I think th th it, this is very rich of meaning. This is very uh, important that we all grasp the meaning of it because uh, we have to prepare for, for the big changes that are coming. And uh, other seasonal rituals or supported actions during Maybon or during this fall equinox, usually they would pick apples because apples are connected with immortality and also it's said to be the food of the dead. Uh, also, they would collect falling leaves in order to make an altar or rituals. 
Uh, so another uh, ritual or supported action you can do around this, uh, this time would be to create an altar with harvest symbols or abundance symbols. So you, I have mine here. I have my, <laughs> my silver bar. So that would be my abundance sil uh, symbol. So yeah, you have yours too. <laughs> hey, wait, hold on, hold on. Bring that up. <laughs> you missed that. What is that? Oh, this? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, keep going, Julie. <laughs> so I think that's gonna that's what I'm going to do with my silver bars. I'm going to put some crystals, some fallen leaves. Uh, so creating an altar, I think, is very powerful to really thank the universe, to be really grateful for the abundance that you have, but also welcome even more for what's to come. Mm. And another ritual that's very important, I feel, uh, during fall season is to clean up your space, clean up your house, to remove old and stagnant energies in order to make room for uh, the new energies that are coming. And also another one that I find is very, very important, and I, I feel like we forgot to do uh we forgot to do that in our modern lives would be to go outside as much as we can to recalibrate with the changing frequencies of the earth. So as we're spending time outside, uh, we're absorbing all these new frequencies because the earth is also in this changing um, changing phase of, uh, well, losing all the leaves, the flowers in order to change for the winter season. So, but we're also changing inside. So we need to sync with the earth's frequencies and we can do that by being as outside in nature as much as we can. Okay, I'm going to ask you a difficult question. You guys can choose to not answer, but I wanted to bring this up because you kind of have it there, but it's not there. And I know there are probably a few people thinking about this already and it's the change of frequencies of the planet itself now as we're discovering how to reconnect with gaia the divine feminine does have a very specific role in there as well with their energy with their motherly energy and with their creation energy so of course we're talking about chi prana orgone all of these words you want to attach to it now as the planet is changing frequency there are um Pagan, yes, but also Taoist, Tantric, also ceremonies at this time of the year for the Divine Feminine to reconnect with Gaia. And one of the ways to do that, if you look at two tuning forks, the uh, forks, the uh, I think the term is, uh, uh, what's the word? Something resonance, uh, sympathetic resonance, where if one resonates to one and you start, you bring another fork close to that frequency, it will also start tuning in to or syncing with those frequencies. As divine feminines yourselves, what would you recommend? I'll have Sophie on the first uh, uh, on the first there for the question. How how would women go about reconnecting that sacred power of theirs, that chi, that prana, that kundalini energy with that? of the planet right now is there a specific alignment or is there a specific method that you could recommend for the audience members and i'll ask julie also the same thing i think there is no wrong way to go about it as long as you really connect with what is really truly your essence i would start with detoxing because to be able to connect with yourself and to your energy and with the, the earth, you need to really be able to hear the frequency. And for this, you need to detox. So I would start with a detoxing of what you eat, what you do. So pay attention to cut as much TV, for example, or as much uh, internet and just connect with yourself, walk outside and to connect with detoxing the chakras. That would be for me the first step to be able to connect to the true frequency and to the, your divine feminine. Wow. Okay. That's actually really good. Uh, Julie, how about you? What do you say? Um, I think reconnecting with the four elements is something that is very important. So I usually try to do an activity or something that involves every one of the four elements. So uh, walking outside uh, is my element for earth. And then I like to burn sage or palo santo for the air or fire element. Uh, I also like to light candles for the fire element and for the water uh, taking a bath. So for me, it's reconnecting with the four elements. I feel like I'm grounded, but also uh, my energy is clearer. And also I'm reconnecting with the earth. 
I like the water thing, uh, generally speaking. In the Taoist uh, traditions, they use the water to amplify the frequency. So you know how sound travels faster underwater than in the air. So too is this energy. So if you're trying to connect with Mother Earth, maybe in a spa, in a bath, or in a hot spring, things like that could be like that extra boost <laughs> to connect. If you've never done this before, you might feel... Um, a rejuvenation and also uh, maybe a two or three day purging after that. So let's talk about that warning there too. When you do reconnect with these energies, the things that are in you that no longer resonate with that frequency, let me just bring up the two tuning forks here again, uh, they tend to want to evacuate the body quickly. Explain that purging process. Uh, let's start with you, Julie. Uh, <laughs> why don't you go ahead, JC? <laughs> No. <laughs> Sophie, you want to take a stab at it? <laughs> sure, why not? I don't know if I will answer exactly your question, but I will tell you what I hear on that. Okay. Um, when you detox, just pay attention because you're going to, at first, to be really more sensitive to anxiety because mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we don't expect sometimes, but when you detox, you're also more sensitive to other energy. So you're feeling more any other stimulus so you're feeling more what is not good for your body when you eat you're mm -hmm. feeling more when you have wrong energies around you you're feeling more when you do something that is wrong because you have clear your energy and then you're more sensitive you're not full of you know the layer of toxicity that you used to be in to protect you that so that you don't feel it anymore now mm -hmm. if you're detox you're going to at first have to deal with more and this is a good thing very good okay um and i'll add to that also um a lot of people when they see the detox symptoms they often uh, are afraid or they might stop there thinking oh i've done something wrong and typically if they go see their health physician they'll say stop doing that it's probably bad when in fact it's a good thing so don't be afraid if you're seeing the detox symptoms just go with it listen to your body take your time be gentle with yourself uh, ask your partner also to be gentle with you and maybe do that as a couple's therapy also uh, it might be advantageous and the thing about um uh, reducing these uh, negative frequencies or old programs that no longer serve you you'll find that if you do that also in divine union you're going to reach higher and higher levels of that kundalini charge we were just uh, talking about. So this is good <laughs> on every level for everyone, but also collectively for the planet as we are trying to reconnect with her and ascend uh, forward here in these new frequencies as we move into this age of Aquarius. So I hope and that makes I, sense. Can I add something to that? No, you lost your turn. <laughs> <laughs> can I Sorry. add a check, please? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting what you just said, JC. And it reminded me of uh, in astrology, the eighth house, uh, which is the house of Scorpio is connected to both Kundalini energy but also abundance in the form of receiving money in abundance so there is a very tight connection between the two so when you raise your vibration you let the universe bring you even more abundance so you open yourself up to receiving so I feel like the two are very much connected well, when I had that uh, last interview on my last channel with Dr. Richard Allen Miller, he was talking about exactly that, how the rich people bring more abundance to them because most of them are read in. Well, not most of them, but some of them are read into these exact technologies. These are technologies that we have. So the higher we bring our frequency, the higher the abundance is attracted to that frequency as well. So um a lot's there for maybe another topic. We're broaching on some stuff that's got me deleted uh, here before. So, yes, GC, you're too funny. Thank you, Valenica. I try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Julie, so let's go back to uh, Maybon. Are we done here? Do we want to... Yeah. Uh, do we all also want maybe Sophie to pull cards on this before we go to the uh, astrological version sure. of the Equinox narrative? What, what do you think? Sure. If Sophie uh, is willing to pull cards, that would be okay. great. Okay. So yeah. general advice maybe on how to reconnect uh, from the nature perspective as opposed to the astrology here connecting yeah. uh, back to Gaia. Let's see what the cards have to say. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot and I was expecting that. We have being more vulnerable and this goes into all of your 
relationship. So be more vulnerable in that season. It will be hard for some. It will be, um, you may have, like we said, some physical symptoms and mm -hmm. it may be really harsh for some certain. Sometimes we have migraines. Sometimes we have vertigos in that season. Sometimes we have lots of things that the doctor cannot really understand. I remember, I don't know if you remember, Julie, but when I was going through my ascension, I had uh, what was really like a stroke for a month. Uh, I had every symptom of a stroke and the doctor couldn't find anything. So there's a lot of symptom when we are stepping into higher vibration. And it's really saying, even if you are stepping into that, be with good intention and be vulnerable. Be okay to receive and do it with the intention that you want to receive. And it's so interesting that you got the lover's card since we're entering into Libra season, which is all about relationships. And I'm going to talk about this in just a few seconds. So yeah, wow. Okay, uh, reconnecting with your partner, divine union energy. <laughs> yes, very much in the uh, frequency field right now. Uh, talking about the frequency field, I want to take a quick a sidestep, Julie. Yvette was asking on the screen here, the Schumann resonance has been a blackout for seven days. Depending on what site you're tracking this on, I know in some of the sites they're still showing it, but it's off the chart. So I don't know if they're deleting it on purpose or what's going on. Do you, um, Julie, intuitively, do you want to say something about the Schumann resonance? Do you want to pick maybe an Oracle card to see what's yeah. happening there? Is so this you want to cards too? Yeah, sure. And then we'll ask uh, Sophie as well. But the reason I'm asking here, and it kind of oh, wow. um, goes back to my original question for Sophie about the queen uh, passing over. For a lot of people, this is the first domino to removing a lot of these frequency gates around the planet. So is it possible now that the human uh, frequency is also contributing here to what people are picking up on the Schumann resonance scale because maybe the gatekeeper is gone? Okay, Julie, your card. Okay. So mine is very funny because it's the darkest uh, card of my deck and it's creation energy. So what's trying to be birthed? And uh, like the card is like black. So I find this very, uh, <laughs> very aligning with the, the question of uh, Yvette. So I think it's because we're in this blackout. I feel like we're in the void right before birthing like a new world. So right before birthing a new energy. So it's like... Uh, like a world of possibilities, basically. So this is what I'm getting from the cards. Okay. Uh, that makes sense also, the creational energy, because I'm having, uh, just so you know, let me see if I can bring this back up on the screen here for you guys, just as a quick sidebar. Uh, Penny Kelly is coming back on the show here on uh, the 23rd. And she was telling me that her looksies are getting more and more difficult, um, I guess, to download. And what she was saying is, that this creational energy now is so off the chart, seeing as us humans were out of our loop, but we're far out of our current loops that we're creating so fast now that any of these predictive tools are no longer as effective as they were perhaps five years ago or 10 years ago. So I hope that makes yeah. sense to everybody. Uh, Sophie, let's see what your cards have That's to say. exactly also. what I'm getting. It's so funny. Okay. I have the same card in, as Julie, but in a tarot deck. Oh. So we have the Empress. <laughs> And this is a new bird, like you were exactly saying. This is a creative side. And we have butterflies, so this is a transformation also there. We have to really be ready for this change and to not put resistance into that. Just be creative, let that flow. Wow. This I, is think we're on, I think we're onto something. I think we are. <laughs> Everybody's saying, wow, wow. wow. Yeah, I know, right? It's this like is we're very inspiring. This. Yes. In yeah, despite like everything that's going on in the world. Very inspiring. Yes, exactly. Well, that's the silver lining in all of this. I know the record control grade is hard. It's been hard for me. I know. I haven't been very vocal. It's not over yet. <laughs> and it's not over yet. Yes, I know. Uh, but yeah, there is a silver lining in all of this. Okay. Uh, Julie, let me bring you back on the screen. And now let's look at uh, the Equinox more from the astrological alignment uh, perspective. Let me bring that back up. Yeah, so Good. in astrology, the equinox is when the sun enters the sign of Libra. So when it's at zero degree of Libra, and it will be in the sign of Libra for uh, almost a month. So uh, this is what we call Libra season. So happy birthday to all the Libra suns out there. I know there must be a lot of you. And if you have some placements in the sign of Libra in your birth chart, then you're going to uh, maybe feel 
this season uh, a bit more than other people. So, so what is it all about this uh, Libra season or equinox? So Libra energy or Venus energy, Venus is the ruling planet of, uh, of Libra. It's all about relationships. I have an echo. I'm trying to uh, see. It. Let me mute myself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So Libra energy is all about relationship to self or relationship to the others. So it's all about how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others. What place uh, do you have for yourself and your own needs in your life? What place do you have for other people in your life? So this is what I call the mirror season. So what Sophie was just saying before, uh, usually there's a lot of stuff that happens in your outer world during uh, Libra season. I feel like it's like a some sort of karmic uh, bounce back of everything that you've put out into the world because it's the mirror season. So you're going to see in the form of meeting other people or facing uh, outside events, you're going to confront situations that are going to be some, let's say, uh, hidden sides of yourself that you're going to have to heal or uh, work with. So this is the mirror season. And uh, all, well, uh, from the first part of the Libra season, Mercury is still retrograde. So it's going to ask us to really uh, work with past energies, to really work with a lot of stuff from before, organize ourselves, because uh, it's going to be in the sign of Virgo as of September 23rd. So really work with our papers, get our money, our finance, our work in order, our everything that is very, very Virgo, organize ourselves and our uh, lives. Um, but despite this kind of boring side to Libra season, this we're going to feel a lot of this Venus energy because it's the ruler of Libra. So Venus is all about desires. It's all about arts, pretty things, also harmonious things. We're going to feel this need for more beauty in our lives, more balance, more harmony. So this is uh, what Libra is all about. And JC, you're a Libra rising, so you must know about this, right? <laughs> I'm gonna unmute you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Like I'm gonna to start singing. I'm gonna start singing some Elvis here. Go ahead. Why not? Go ahead. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> right before the episode, he was singing. So maybe if you guys ask in the chat, he's going to <laughs> fulfill your request. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Getting back to this Libra season. So uh, this is a good time for all kinds of negotiations because uh, Libra is the lover's card in, in the tarot. So it's all about negotiations, agreements, and also social justice. So this is going to be very interesting. Uh, what is going to be happening in the world? Maybe some laws are going to be re, uh, let's say, um, revisited during that period because it's all about the laws also, the social contracts. Uh, also, another uh, topic that will be very uh, important, and it's all related to Venus again, it's money. So money will be very important during Libra season. And at the, the very end of Libra season, we're going to have the eclipses in the financial axis. So basically, it's like prepare for eclipse season during uh, Libra season. So make sure your money is in order and make sure uh, your investments are in order and make sure you've placed everything uh, in places you uh, you trust and you feel like it's a good investment. And a few people in this chat, uh, Chris, including on the screen here, is asking about silver. We'll get the silver here too, and we're going to talk about the special episode. Uh, Julie Bixweir and myself are going to be hosting uh, this Thursday. So, Chris, yeah. I'll get back to uh, this as a question later on in the show. Keep going, Julie. Yeah, and I picked some cards uh, right before the show. And uh, what I got was Saturn in Aquarius. So I think the Saturn uh, energies will be very important during uh, Libra season. So this Saturn Uranus square that we're going to feel all September and all October. And Saturn will be very strong to start with. So that means rules, uh, obstacles, maybe constraints in our uh, expression, in our resources, in our supply chains. This is all Saturn and Aquarius. So problem in the distribution of resources, but also rules from the governments, from the powers that were or be, depending on how you see it. 
And so, yeah, this Saturn in, in Aquarius, I feel that this is going to be a very uh, important energy. And lastly, uh, we're having Mercury retrogrades until October 2nd. So this is the time to really have your things prepared, make sure everything is in order for you. Uh, you had the conversations you need to have while it was in Libra. And uh, as of October 10th, I feel like October 10th is a very important date because Mercury will be direct at this date and will be re-entering the sign of Libra. So we're going to have the Sun, Venus, and also Mercury in the sign of Libra. So I feel like this is going to be decision time. So make sure you are well prepared for October, October 10th, because I feel like this is going to be an important date. And I wanted to ask Sophie if she could pull some cards. So if I'm right, that this date is going to be uh, maybe an important one. Do we want to start there on October 10th? Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. Yeah, I already saw that October is going to be a busy month. There is going to be a tower moment. So is so eclipses are tower moment, but there's more to it. There is more than just uh, eclipses. Let's check. And while Sophie is pulling the cards, Crypto Pharma says, JC will have to stand up if he sings Elvis so we can see his hip movement. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and uh, Dan says, I'm all shook up. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> No, oh, he's another no, fan. There'll be no jiggling on this show. <laughs> uh, uh, Sarah and I saw the new Elvis movie, and uh, she was interested by a lot of the jiggling in the show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> of course, Elvis the pelvis. Elvis the pelvis. Yes, that's what it, that's what it was in the show. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the cards. Cher says we're winning, JC. <laughs> yeah. You gotta wait a long time. <laughs> Okay, so October. I do have Venus with the Divine Feminine. I will try to show it the cards. Did you go um, for all October or October 10th? I started, I started in October 10th, but I did not exclude the rest of the month. Okay. I will start with that. Um, it's reversed, guys, so it's give me a, a moment here. <laughs> it's hard with the mirror thing. So we have a Divine Feminine with the... This is the... Uh, Venus, and we do have here something new with this Virgo. So I think that there could be laws again with females, or there could be something around the theme of females in a society. We also have trouble with along the way, and we have the truth. So more truth is going to get out. Yes. <laughs> and this brings some trouble for certain people, uh, of course. So um, it's going to be probably a bit chaotic when this came um in what when this will resurface this truth will resurface but we have the healing after so october for me it's a lot of truth coming out sadness for some trouble for some but mostly just truth that we want that get out so we can deal with it and on um, the society also the rest of the month let me just take one more card for this yeah, the truth will get out, guys. We have devil in disguise, illusion. So I love this month. It's uh, a lot that will just wow. get out in the open. The card I pulled for uh, for October 10th was this card. So there you go. Like your devil in disguise card. Wow. Wow. That's a good Elvis song. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't get me started. Okay. Uh, Donna Miller, Gail uh, Tigner, I see a donation from you, but the question didn't come through on PayPal. So I really would love to get through those. So if you retype them here, hopefully you have the same nickname so I can uh, follow through. Um, moderators, if you see questions from either Donna or Gail, uh, please repeat post them for me here in the live chat so I don't miss them. And Julie, uh, Sophie, and myself will try to star them uh, for later on. So I do want to get to you guys, but I do have a one from Heather and also another one here from Tempest Bessie. Um, so yes, guys, hold on a second here. I forgot at the beginning of the show to let you know, of course, we have another beautiful pyramid donation here by Carla at Ascension Organized. This is for uh, one of you lucky uh, people here tonight in the PayPal uh, tip jar. So let's see what this beautiful pyramid named Paola is all about. Hey, everybody. This is Carla from Ascension Organized again. And today I have Paola to show you. So Paola is 
right off the bat, the solar plexus, solar um, energies, the sun. Basically, she's a ray of sunshine. <laughs> she is made of white quartz with labradorite and brass metals together with the flower of life and gold. So as we know, labradorite is great for imagination, creating new ideas, bringing clarity to your inner self, peace, promoting the third eye, encouraging truth and freedom, as well as balance. I'll give her a quick turn around so you can see her. And there's Paola. I hope you guys like her and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Carla. Guys, if you're looking at getting one of these amazing pyramids in your own possession, you can do so at ascensionorganites.com. Uh, and if you use coupon code Beyond Mystic, you'll get an extra uh, 10% off. And uh, we also have a candle up for grabs. Julie, what do we have tonight from uh, the Yoga Elena collection on the uh, Maison Jupiter website? So tonight, so tonight we have... Whoop, whoop. Let me bring my... Have have Go ahead. <laughs> we have the full moon candle. So uh, this is um, uh, garnet, so garnet crystal infused uh, candle. And, uh, the scent is sandalwood, and this is for the root chakra. So all the crystals that Elena places into the, the, the candles were charged from the last full moon that we had. So she puts a lot of energy for grounding into uh, those crystals. And uh, we felt like the root chakra candle was the best to go through all the changes that are uh, coming. So it's really good for grounding into the earth, good for the fall equinox. So uh, this is the one we chose for tonight. Awesome. It makes a lot of sense. The root chakra also for reconnecting with Gaia. Uh, it starts from there. So that's really good. So that's also MaisonJupiter.com, guys, if you want to get one of these uh, candles for yourselves. I know a lot of you uh, are getting depleted on the first batch of uh, candles from when we first launched this. So this is the time to restock here before uh, the fall. Uh, Julie, coupon code Beyond Mystic still here, also valid for 10% off on the candles as yes. well? Yes, okay. Beyond Mystic for 10% off uh, of the consultations, the candles, and the bird charts. Perfect. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Ornella, I hope you're well, JC. Love everything you bring. Oh, thank you so much. Hamilton, Ontario. Okay, hey, from Ontario. I love it. Okay, uh, what else do I have? So I had, uh, I think it was Eternal Sunshine. She says, Gail did not have a question. It was just a donation. Okay, so I got that one. Who was the other one? Uh, Heather. Did you guys see a question from Heather? If you saw it, mm. please retype it. If not, we'll try it maybe some other time. But anyways, she'll be in the draw for either the uh, candle or the uh, pyramid for tonight. Okay, Donna Miller, no? Okay. Uh, I'll get back to the questions here in a bit. So, Julie, let's go back to um, Mabon, no, Fall Equinox. Is there anything else we need to look at here in terms of the alignments? I know October 10 is big, but I had earlier in the show, somebody was asking about September 24th. I had started, oh, here it is. Fit for Life, September 24. What's going on on September 24th? I've heard this recurring. I think there was September 20th too, this thing about weird cashless society, I believe, starting on the 20th. Some people have been talking about this. And also here, the September 24th. Do you both want to take a stab on this? Maybe, Julie, while you bring up the astrology, if you want to spin the wheel there on your software, I'll ask Sophie first to maybe pull some astro cards. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll look at the date uh, while Sophie pulls cards. Okay, so Sophie, why don't we pull from September 20th to the 24th? If there's any weird events coming up, what can we glean from the cards in terms of their energies? I just have a lot of tension, a lot of distraction. I have a lot of stress here. No real event. I have the, the answer is no. Let me just check with the tarot. No, just a lot of tensions. Just a lot of things that are drag us, dragging us down. But on particular event, I have the, again, the answer is no. So... It's really just tension building up for me, I would say. This mm -hmm. is my card of having a dark cloud over her head. And we have here the time is not ripe. So for me, it would not be something happening, just a build up. Okay. And Julie, you want to take a stab at yep. that also from the astrology? Is there anything weird there as well? 
From the astrology standpoint, we have a, a Neptune opposition with um, both Mercury retrograde and Venus. Venus is all about money. Neptune is, brings some kind of fog and illusions sometimes. Sometimes it's, it talks about the media, the mainstream media. So I feel like uh, it, there's going to be a false flag involving money, probably from the mainstream media. So something like, yeah, an illusion. I'm sorry? The Feds meeting, uh, we do have a Feds meeting. Uh, I don't know the exact date, but that's about the money that could bring attention up. Uh, I'll let mm -hmm. you continue. Sorry. Well, one of the Fed presidents just yesterday in the minutes uh, showcased that he was getting for a 100% basis point increase or 1% basis point increase yeah. here in the Fed funds rate uh, coming up soon. So whether that comes to pass or not, it's an indication that there's still, as Bill Holter uh, said a couple of months ago on our show, pulling the plug here and creating as much havoc as they can on the way out. So yeah, that yeah. could be part of it for sure. Julie? And some potential, like they, they could say like, oh, we're removing cash money in order to promote CBDCs or something like that. But it's going to be a fake flag, okay? So it's not going to be something very real. But at the same time, there is a sun opposition with the Jupiter. So that could bring a new agreement. Because when we talk about mundane astrology, the sign of Libra is all about making agreements between countries. And Jupiter could be uh, an agreement to bring some sort of... Uh, gold back uh, currency between some countries. So there could be an agreement to use gold uh, between uh, countries on that. Oh, okay. My spidey senses are tingling. You're, I think you're onto something. And Chris also uh, from the chat, he was a gentleman asking about silver. Why don't we get into that here too? He's saying here the LBMA will be closed on Monday the 19th of September due to the state funeral, of course. Now, Again, guys, join us here Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Julie, Bix, and myself are going to be looking at this idea of the silver suppression dying along with the queen. We're going to bring in the astrology in this show as well. So please join us for that at 3 p.m. Eastern this Thursday. And Thursday night, of course, uh, the Wacky Woo with Jason at 4. We're going to be looking at silver gold and also crypto there with Woo Woo Dude and perhaps also another guest. So you don't want to miss that. So going back to this idea of the LBMA. I wanted to point you guys to this video also from Cliff High from a couple of days ago. Uh, B Uprising, this particular video here. If you go check that out, he talks about the death of the monarchy here. Some of the old web bot data reports that suggested that uh, there would be one replacement after another and the world population would just you know, stop paying attention to these guys. So there's that. And also their ties uh, the royalty, the monarchy to the LBMA. So the London Bullion Market Association, which of course, um, in the conspiracy theory world, not here on this show, uh, they call that uh, price fixing <laughs> mechanisms uh, for the rest of us commoners. So is it possible here that the, the death of this particular entity is also creating some type of situation where the controls of suppression led by the LBMA could also be defunct? Let me start with you, uh, Sophie, first on the cards. Pull some cards on that. And then I'll ask Julie to relook at the astrology uh, in terms of what we are going to be valued and when and why gold and silver is in that equation also from the astrological standpoint. So, uh, Julie, I'll ask you that next. But, uh, Sophie, first on this idea of the death of the suppression scheme with the death of the queen and perhaps the LBMA, as per Chris's comment here. We do have a change of vibration in what is in the money. So we do have a yes about that. I say a change of vibration because I do have this card. Ladies should listen. This is always my card for I'm telling you what to do. And between that card, I have this is my card for vacation. And I have here support and help. So and we have repair next to it. So there is a big change with the, the money with that event. And it's supposed to be helping us to be more independent. So mm -hmm. this is a good thing, I think. It will turn in, turn in favor in the money system. It will turn in our favor to be more independent. This is something that will be uh, useful. But we have still to be very careful because there is this thing in the back that wants to change that outcome. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 
on my really? end, I don't think the big event would be on that date. I feel like in the astrology is telling me more like something subtle would happen, like disagreement between countries. I think it might not be out in the open. It might be more uh, behind the curtains. But I feel like the big event that we're looking at more uh, towards the LBMA and the value of gold and silver, I feel like this is going to be more the eclipse. Of more in the October eclipse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. this agreement that's going to be uh, made around that date, around September 24th, uh, it might involve China because China is the Libra ruled country. So I'm just putting this out in the open. <laughs> well, also in the news just a couple of days ago, um, Eurasian countries, including Russia, are putting together their competition to the yeah. LBMA. We did talk about this in the last Astro Woo as well. So uh, that makes sense. And Chris was also uh, pointing out that, yeah, the FOMC meeting, what uh, Sophia was talking about, the Federal Open Market Committee uh, meeting is on February, uh, September 20th and the 21st. Now, Robin was saying, uh, CK here was talking about an FF yeah. on the 24th, financially related. And this ties in perhaps to the 17 cities also that Arizona was warning about. A lot of people were trying to decode these 17 cities and only to realize that in each and every one of them there was a federal reserve branch so there seems to be uh well, what's the expression where there's smoke there's fire so there, yeah. there's something there brewing in the background but i would tend to agree with julie by the time we all actually see it i think in a more formal way we're probably looking closer to the eclipses uh, but like everything else there has to be a setup for that and i think we're living in that setup moment now so again go check out the b uprising video here from cliff he did a really good job on that one uh to get a little bit more details on that as well as um it, it does tie in and we did talk about it quite a bit here let me bring it back up on the screen also here the last um a video uh where did you go hello couldn't you there you go. Uh, uh, I'm not even going to read it, but the second poster here. So <laughs> go check that one. It's a blockbuster episode, I swear to you. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot in there for $2.99. Absolutely amazing investigation. Julie uh, and myself peppered uh, our friend here with all of these uh, very pertinent questions, both from our research, but also from the audience's research and questioning a line here a week before this show. So there's a lot in this show. Uh, Five-star rating already from the viewers. Go check it out. Really, really cool and claudette says yes i love that poster <laughs> uh, julie, made the post <laughs> Ju Ju julie made the poster so big thank you to <laughs> julie there. okay um julie from the astro did you want to retweak a little bit that too you talked about the the in the astro woo why silver and gold and why as humans we are going to be forced with these astrological alignments to rethink what we actually give value to can you explain that also a little bit here for the audience? Yeah, sure. So I feel like this is uh, this has to do with uh, the eclipse axis, which is the nodes where they're located for a year and a half. And this is the Taurus Scorpio axis. This is the financial axis. But as you guys know, money is just a form of energy. So this is the energy axis. So what you... Uh, what you value in your life, where do you want to invest your energy, your time, your money? This is Taurus. But also uh, putting yourself in position to receive this abundance and this, uh, this money, this time, this intimacy, which is Scorpio. So as you can see, this is an energy uh, exchange axis. So while the nodes are there for a year and a half, we're going to have eclipses along this axis for a year and a half. So the next uh, two eclipses are going to be in the sign of Scorpio and Taurus as well in October and November. So we're all collectively ha having to uh, modify the way that we uh, give, but also receive. So whether it be money, uh, energy, time, uh, also intimacy, which is also Taurus Scorpio related. So every uh, energy exchange has to be reviewed and changed for the better because we're uh, shifting also in our frequencies and vibrations. So uh, we're no longer uh, blind, blindlessly walking into this uh, energy extracting matrix, not really knowing what we're doing and just consuming, consuming and watching uh, 
to, to TV series. So we're trying to really focus and uh, deliberately give your energy to something that really has value for you. So this is kind of the big change that collectively we're uh, working with right now. So, uh, But before we can really shift it, uh, it has to change. It's like this big tower moment. Wow. Okay. Really good. Javier, thank you so much. I love the comment. Love you too. Um, Safi, anything else on that in terms of... Uh, okay, yes. I want to ask you actually a specific pull, a card pull on this. Julie mentioned something here too. We need to be ready and willing to receive. And for that, we need to know that we are worthy. And this damn matrix, if you want to call it that, has been inculcating, brainwashing us all our lives with we are not worthy, right? We're supposed yep. to be on our meals praying and hoping to have, you know, little crumbs at the end of the table when in fact we are absolutely worthy. Can we pull the cards there and see how we can um, inspire the audience members to know that from themselves from a deep uh, inside perspective as opposed to uh, looking for outside validation and how, how also they can teach other people that extreme worthiness that we all have as human beings. Yep, absolutely. I love it. It says take risk and it says love me or leave me but be independent. So it taps right into that vibration. So as you were saying about the exchange of energy, if you work extra hours, for example, and you don't get paid for that because you see your value as productivity and you don't want to have this exchange because you don't value yourself enough. That's one thing. That's exhaustion. We are in Virgo season. Virgo is all about work also. So we, we need to see our value in all parts of your life and to claim what is yours so in that time maybe it's time for you to start your own business maybe it's time for you it's time for you to be more independent and say no maybe it's also time for you to see your true value for what it is we are not productive to the same level because our, st our strength are not placed exactly in the same place as anyone else it's a tough lesson, but it's a lesson of just respecting who you truly are. And as unique as you are, those strengths that you have are for something specific. And you need to really see the beauty in that. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow, I love it. Okay. And Deb, Jean-Claude, you're the perfect host. <laughs> when you laugh, we laugh with you. Okay, thank you. At least you're not laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm feeling giddy tonight. I don't know if it's the storm energies or what, but thank you, uh, Deb. I appreciate that. And Hankowitz, uh, congratulations. He just got his uh, silver bars. Quite a few people asking also. Uh, let me see if I can bring that back up on the screen. Uh, Sophie and Julie were pointing their bars out here tonight to the audience members. So yes, you can find those here at beyondmystic.net forward slash silver. Atop the page there is the special order form for the Beyond Mystic uh, silver bars, as well as the uh, discounts, both here for the Canadian audience at MF Bullion uh, Canada. Uh, there the silver maples are on sale, as well as here on the American side with Mel Franklin. Uh, quite a few of their... Um, Sovereign coins here on sale at 475 over spot. Amazing price there as well. So beyondmystic.net forward slash silver. Get it while you can because there's a lot happening there on the silver market. And again, uh, Julie, uh, Bix, and myself are going to be talking about what's happening at the COMEX already. There seems to be a setup for a short squeeze here uh, very soon. I saw a post by Alistair McLeod just a couple of days ago saying that we could be reaching that nickel moment in silver. So if you guys were watching the nickel market earlier this year, and the complete shit show that was uh, in terms of the breakages of their uh, markets, uh, we could be there in silver as per Alistair McLeod. So that's going to be a fabulous episode here on Thursday. Uh, please join us for that. John, JC, sweet mercy. These sisters are queens. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, just absolutely love uh, anytime they're on. Well, thank you, uh, John. I appreciate that. And, thank you. Uh, thank you as well. Um, Elaine, okay, wait, hold on a second here. We're 58 minutes in, and I have some questions already in the PayPal tip jar. So let me get to that first here, and then I'll see if I can get back to Elaine. Uh, so Tempest, okay, so we're going to do uh, one question per uh, per person. So let's see what this one here. Can Sophie, okay, she's asking for Sophie. Can Sophie tell me what universe has to tell me? So that's from Tempest Bessie. So we'll start with Sophie on that one, and then we'll try to pull some other uh, questions specifically that Julie could also answer. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of change in your life. So it could be a new work, could be a new lover, but we need to really switch the focus. So there's a big change that you don't, um, you cannot resist that. This is a tower moment that will come into your life really soon. I like that fresh energy. This is meant for you. So it's more aligned with you than what you have currently. So either in love, either in uh, a job. Let me just take one more. Yeah. It's really something that is aligned for you and it's a mastery of what is your communication skills. So this is your new challenge, your next chapter in life, and it's ready for you. It's really coming soon. Okay, that's very good. Sorry. I have the giggles there because Don is saying we laugh <laughs> with you, but we also laugh at you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm having fun okay uh the next one also was for sophie i think it said sophie in it so let me let me do that first and then we'll ask it's Julie. fine for me yeah. we can put sophie on the spotlight all night <laughs> yes okay heather yes from the paypal tip jar her question for sophie what does tarot say about my future path my psychic friend said i had a past life as a powerful healer in egypt okay so what's okay. next for heather on her future path sophie Hmm. I agree with the past life. I do see past life here. Let me just switch decks for you. Um, I agree that you have more and more in the astral uh, travel. I do see more dreams. There's a lot connecting to the moon and there's a lot connecting to your sleep. So your subconscious will be... Um, well, your subconscious is basically just ascending. So mm -hmm. you need to be really resting because this looks like it's going to be demanding. If you need to work full time, you need to go to bed really early because your sleep is going to be not as um, healing for you than what it should be because you are working also in your sleep. You're also working in your dreams. Let me just check here. Yeah, your astral traveling, you can also start to have dreams that will speak to you for uh, with symbols, and you need to listen to that. It's beginning to be really strong for you. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, Sophie, uh, before I ask uh, Julie some questions here too, what's the booking uh, schedule looking like right now with either the uh, one hour or the priority booking for the audience members? Um, we are starting to book November. Uh, so this is for the one hour um, appointment. I think we're our, uh, we are at the second week of November right now. For yeah. prior booking, I don't have any uh, next week because I'm going to vacation and oh I will open some places after the, uh, the, the next week. So for you guys, for priority booking. Okay, so guys, if you're looking at a booking before Christmas, now's the time before all those spots uh, are booked up. And of course, Beyond Mystic, uh, in one word, will give you 10% off uh, these bookings with Sophie as well. You can find those at MaisonJupiter.com and the links uh, are in the description box below. Julie, you're up on deck. Alien777, my deja vu is off the charts. It's so weird. What's going on with people and deja vu right now? Is there anything astrologically that could explain some of the thinning of the veil or some of our insights, maybe with our third eye, to start to see some of the patterns in this matrix? What can you answer, Alien 777? Okay, first card I have is deep cellular, cellular healing. So it says Arcturus energy, physical and emotional healing. Huh. So I feel like these deja vus are also happening because we're uh, healing past lifetimes of uh, things we already lived before. So, uh, for example, the, the, the person we had a question from uh, right before, uh, she had a past life in Egypt. So she might be having deja vus, for example, about uh, healing or uh, situations in which uh, healing is involved for her because it, it also shifts with her past lifetimes. So mm. it's kind of uh, reintegrating uh, our uh, uh, the full spectrum of our DNA uh, power because of this deep cellular healing. 
Well, that's interesting. The deja vu leading to you recognizing something, making you pause and react to, okay, what's happening right now? How does this connect to me? What part do I need to address? And again, that healing component there is very important, especially when dealing with old past lives, old traumas, maybe old programmings. Wow, that's a really good one. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, if that I can add yeah. something. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I had that in a reading this week. Um, this was the first time that I saw something like that. And guys, I've been doing tarot for many, many years. <laughs> um, I did have a client that had somebody in the family that was supposed to be uh, dead and they got a second chance. And that person went on close near death experience and teenage years, but this person still lives on. This deja vu, it's, it's just triggered that memory in me because I think that uh, in some cases, rare cases that is, but some cases we can have somebody that was supposed to be dead having a second chance and reliving it. So this is creating deja vu also. Hmm. Wow. Okay. There's a lot of people asking about the uh, Sophie's cards. <laughs> So the, the Elvis deck, uh, she designed it herself, but also her your, your second deck, Sophie, you also designed it yourself, right? The one with the uh, old movie posters. Yes, that yeah. one I do have it. Uh, I created it myself and that one I also created myself. But the others, I have about 50 decks. So um, I, I have no clue of the names. Okay. The crazy toaster is asking for the brand. Well, you made these yourselves. And uh, yeah. I know this is a project of yours to get uh, perhaps permission from Graceland to actually produce this tarot uh, deck card uh, with Elvis. That'd be really, really cool. I know a lot of people in the show, including uh, the people who are looking at the tarot uh, courses here on beyondmystic.academy. Uh, guys, just wanted to give you a quick update on that. Janine is hard at work uh, recording the final touches here to the level two. And she promised me that probably by the end of this month, we're almost, again, there's just a lot of weird stuff happening in all of our lives here that uh, keep delaying stuff. But we're hard at work. Uh, we have not forgotten you. I know we're getting a lot of emails of people asking, hey, we're done with the level one. Where's level two? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, on top of that, though, if you haven't seen it already uh, and you're interested in this, please check out the Tarot Numerology Workshop. This is a two, two and a half hour workshop Janine, Julie, and myself put together to help you understand how to get to your soul essence and your soul mission. Uh, using uh, the tarot deck absolutely fascinating show not only can you use it to, for yourself to better understand how you're navigating your path but also for your friends families and loved ones to understand what make them tick and to have better relationships with everybody so really really a uh, cool uh, workshop guys go check it out at beyondmystic.academy Julie, i'm supposed to find some questions for you also i had one or i had a really good one did it just come off the screen hold on do you, do you see a question there, Julie? Did you find one or star one also? Uh, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. I'll take one last pass at the uh, uh, PayPal tip jar. I can't, I can't read the chat and talk at the same time. I'm such a bad multitasker. <laughs> JC, you're doing amazing. <laughs> I'm the king of rock and roll, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me see. Uh, Marcia, is this a... Let me see if I can pull this one up here. It's a little bit slow tonight. No, goddamn. Oops, sorry. No, there's no question on that one. Hold on. Let's see if I can grab another one here. If not, I'll grab one from the live chat here because I want to showcase. We're going uh, to do uh, the Tartaria uh, pay-per-view next week. So I picked this question while you were looking for questions. And you know what? We're supposed to do that show for a month now. And a, a, a whole bunch of stuff happens, of course. Yeah. Uh, you guys know what happened with uh, Sophie and Judy. Janine was also moving. I've also had some weird things happen in our life. So anyways, we'll, we'll get back to that. So that will be uh, next Wednesday, correct, Julie, for the Tartarian show? Yes, next week. Okay. Well, Claudette says, dang, these sisters are great. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me go back to the live. I'm going to try to pick a question here. Uh, 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 Hank Witz, thank you for the comment. Appreciate that. Good multitasking, JC. Okay. He's, he's amazing I, at it because believe me, I tried and I'm not even close to where you are, JC. <laughs> not even close. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I work hard at that. But yes, it's my past life as a DJ, uh, putting everything together, mixing everything together. Uh, yeah. Okay, sparks of light. I'm having trouble. Okay, let's do this one. I'm having a hard time right now. Any message from these beautiful angels? 
Okay, let's start with uh, Julie. Do you want to pull? We don't have a date here for the astrology, but let's pull some oracle cards here as well. And I'll also ask, uh, I guess, Sophie to help our help out uh, Spark of Life yeah. afterwards as well. And we'll end on that, I think, tonight. Okay. Funny because I talked about the mirror season earlier, and I have the mirror card for you, Sparks of Light. So, who or what is triggering you? So I feel like uh, as we're entering into this Libra season on September 22nd, so this is the mirror season. So everything that are that is trying to grasp for our attention, any, everything we need to heal, anything that needs our attention is going to be um, in front of us during this Libra season. And I feel that's what's happening for you too, is that you're uh, being confronting with things, situations, people that you're having uh, some healing to do uh, with those. These are all, let's say, hidden aspects of you. Uh, it's kind of a shadow work phase that you're having to uh, deal with. And as a message of hope, I've got the card Soul Family. Call in your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. So I feel like Maybe you don't know them right now. Maybe you know them already. Maybe you're about to meet them. But uh, maybe to um, visualize that you're uh, connecting with your soul tribe and manifesting this in your uh, real life. And I feel like these are going to be uh, people that are going to be helping you a lot in this uh, period. Wow, that's really good and profound. Uh, you made me think of something here. Uh, there was another question earlier in the chat. I'll get to that in a sec. But but first, uh, Sophie, what did you want to add here also for Sparks of Life? I did also have the healing. So I do have the card of the doctor here. So we do have healing for you that is going to start appearing in your life. For that, I think in the Virgo season, we need to check up either with a natural healer or either with a every kind of healer that you want. Uh, we know in the community, sometimes we prefer certain kind to others when it comes to healers, but we need to have a checkup because you're due to have some release and you're going to have also heavy burden to just let them out on the door. You look to me like Atlas with the weight of the world on your shoulders. And this checkup with a natural healer or an energetic healer will help you to just leave the pressure out and just have some healing for you. You really deserve it. And it's time that this release is coming for you. Wow, really good. Um, Julie, before I forget, and also before I get to the last question, uh, for people who are looking at getting a little bit more insight of understanding how astrology and the um, placement of these bodies affect their own energies, what do you have them for here? Uh, for them here uh, on Maison Jupiter with the personalized birth charts? Explain that. Yeah, on MaisonJupiter.com, we have the personalized birth charts. So these are uh, digital products. It's a frameable poster in the color of your choice. And it, it is your own personalized birth chart. So the, the exact placement of your planets and the sun and the moon at the very moment of your birth. So you can frame it and uh, put it up your wall and look at it when we talk about astrology, because uh all the transits of planets are going to affect your birth chart in a different way. So it's a really good starting point in uh, learning how to uh, know yourself better with your birth chart. Wow. Okay. There you go, guys. MaisonJupiter.com. Again, Beyond Mystic, 10% off. Uh, finish the book publishing. Oh, my goodness. I'm wearing my tribe necklace today. I love that. If this is your tribe, well, you are my tribe as well. So thank you so much for that. And I want that reminded me of somebody who asked a question earlier. If I had seen a video that so and so had done about so and so, I want to say one thing on that. If you like the show here and you love the frequency, by all means, please share it. And if you don't, that's okay too. Like we're not forcing anybody to watch us. But I'll ask you when you're looking at uh, and listening to channels. Are they spending most of their energy trying to build with you, the audience, or are they spending most of their energy trying to destroy other people and other channels? That really tells you a lot about what I think about so-and-so making videos about so-and-so. On this show, I really don't spend time on that. I'm working with you guys, with Julie, Sophie, and all of my guests to try to bring the best possible energies for you guys so that we can all navigate here and come up 
better, stronger on the other side of what's currently in front of us as we transition here into this new world. I hope that makes sense. I hope you see the sincerity in my voice there. Uh, Julie, you're nodding your head. Do you want to add to that? And I'll also ask uh, uh, Sophia, I guess, for the last words on that as well. Well, well said, JC, first of all. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. And if you guys notice, since the very beginning, we really tried to not give our energy into uh, talking about other people in negative ways or criticizing other people's work. Uh, I agree with you 100% uh, about if you, you don't align or resonate with someone, I just don't watch them. So that's as simple as that. And I personally don't want to put my energy into bashing other people. I have other things to take care of. And I am trying to use my energy as the most creative way possible. And I think I'm trying to uplift people as, as best as I can with my energy. So this is my personal choice. I love it. Thank you, Julie. And how about you, Sophie? Last words. This community is amazing and this is all that matters, that we are there for each other, we try to help each other and that we care for each other. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. JC, 100%. Gisela, thank you. 100%. Uh, Sophie, that's it. It's short and to the point. And it's very easy um, when it's short and to the point. You can tell the frequency. Um, uh, how do I say it? Not a match, but a uh, uh, frequency set. Oh, man, it's late. It's a long show. And you guys are making me laugh, so I wanted to sing some Elvis for you guys. But damn it, we just ran out of time. <laughs> just big fun with you guys. Yeah. Guys, that was the edition of the Divine Feminine Oracle Show, of course, here for the Fall Equinox. And who knows? Maybe on the Fall Equinox, I'll sing some Elvis for you guys. Or maybe I'll dress up as Elvis for the next Hollywood uh, Halloween show. So stay tuned oh. for that. One. It's going to be a crazy Halloween costume. Wow here on Beyond Mystic. So I love you guys. Have a great evening. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Au revoir. Can't wait for that show. Bye.